And Luke, just Jamie here. So this tutorial is going to be about the awesome WinUAE, which is of course the Amiga emulator, uh, which also covers the CD32 and the Commodore CDTV. Um, I'm guessing a lot of people would want to use this tutorial to run, say, Amiga 500 games. Uh, most iconic games were from the Amiga 500. And of course, I had to change my desktop background to the classic Amiga 500 released in the mid 80s. So first things first, we're going to go to the WinUA website and you've got a choice of options under the download tab. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Zip Archive 64-bit. Uh, my processor is running 64-bit architecture. If you're running a 32-bit CPU, then feel free. Well, actually, you will need the 32-bit. Uh, you also got options here for installers. Uh, which obviously installs it to your hard drive but i'm going to go for a more portable approach which is the zip archive so i'm going to just download this and drag it out onto my desktop double left click and i'm going to make a folder for this so new folder and i'm going to just call this uae so it's saying i've already got one called uae so the reason I've made the UAE folder is once you open this up, it uh, automatically uh, produces extra files. So it's just cleaner, uh, to tidier to have them in one folder. So let's just go in, open up this application. And uh, straight away, it's asking me um, if I have a ROM, a Kickstart ROM, that is. Uh, so we need to ensure we got one of those and you can purchase these from certain websites. So uh, it's telling me to check the system ROM path and click rescan ROMs. So if we OK this, and my aim is to make this tutorial as simplified as possible. Uh, there are several on YouTube tutorials. Um, they seem to me a little bit too in depth um, and they don't need to be. So let's just quickly go to paths. And if we go to system ROMs, which is located at the top here, if we just go to the browse and look for our system ROMs file or files which is the kickstart files which I was just talking about so just locate them and set up your directory it will then scan uh, what you have what you bought what you own uh, for your kickstart ROMs that is so it's telling us that it's found a number of different systems for kickstart ROMs so, okay, this. So, first things first, uh, to quickly get ADF files running, which is floppy disk files for Amiga, if we just go to Quick Start, uh, if we go to Model, and first of all, set this as the A500, we're also gonna wanna leave uh, the configuration as the 1.3 ROM OCS. Uh, with slow RAM, which is very common settings uh, with the original hardware for the 500 and the 500 plus models, I believe. So just do that. And you can then go down to display. And if you want a full screen when starting your ADF game, if you just go to settings and then as my cursor can show you, native, if we just select full screen, so your next task is going to be to actually insert your ADF file. So if you click on select image file here and, and locate your game, in my case it's the Allen's Family, which as you can see here it says ADF. If we just press start, and I've connected my faithful PlayStation 3 controller to this and by the seems of it, uh, WinUA nowadays doesn't require you to configure controllers, it seems to automatically do this. So I'm sure a lot of you have played Adam's Family at some point. It was on the Super Nintendo or Famicom if you're in America. Um, it's also on other platforms, Commodore 64 Spectrum. Uh, the Amiga version of this and the Super Nintendo were my favorite ports of it.
and here we go. So this is your basic uh, setup for running ADF files really quick and quick to the point as you can see. So if we will exit this screen, if we just press F12, that'll bring back this menu. So from here, if we go back down to display, native, windows, okay, and just press F12 again to bring this menu back. What we're gonna want to do now is stop running this game uh, because I'm done with showing you how to run .adf games. So close it down, whoops, I'm glad to reopen this. And you notice just then uh, that since I put the kickstart files into paths, it's not longer asking me to insert them. So all that's done and dusted now. So next thing I want to show you is how to run, let's say, CD32 games. So obviously if we go back to quick start, which is there for a reason, it's very quick. Uh, it configures things automatically. And if it didn't, you'd have to mess around with the chipset options cpu options you know the list is endless so for this tutorial and a quick precise uh, way of uh, playing these games we go to quick start and then we can go to cd32 configuration cd32 and again if we want full screen we're going to go to settings under display native full screen so we got all this set up on the winua side so our CD32 uh, game in this case, when you download these, they will often come as zipped files. Uh, the CD32 game I have chosen for this tutorial is gonna be Alien Breed. And I'm sure many of you have good memories of this one. So you extract this and you are left with two files. You've got a ISO file, uh, which shows you a combat disc on there, disc image file, and you've also got a .q file, and it's the .q file you need to look at. This is the game file which is going to run. So if we go to CD and hard drives, and if we go back to this part just here, select image file, we then go uh, to find where that game is located, which is on desktop, and like I was just saying, we select the .q file, so double left click it. So now everything is set up under Quick Start CD32. Uh, display is now at full screen. We can now go to start. And here we have it. So uh, this is the Amiga CD32 running. Not a blind bit of difference between this version and the Amiga version. Uh, the Amiga 500 version that is. So once again, it's already auto configured. I didn't need to configure a controller to play this one. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, Alien Breed actually had um, three ports, three games, uh, which were kind of remasters, reboots on the PlayStation 3, which are uh, kind of 2.5D isometric games. They're actually pretty good. So here we go. And to be honest, I was never too good at Alien Breed. Uh, big fan of the Alien films, but just couldn't get into this game even back in the day. So yeah, not too familiar with this. Like I said, I've just downloaded this game just for the purposes of this tutorial. So once again, if we want to exit out of the CD32, we just F12. And we are back to this screen again. So next up, as I promised, we're gonna also show you how to run Commodore CD TV games. Uh, of course, Commodore CD TV was a massive failure. Um, as well as the CD32, I'll add. So if we go back to Quick Start, and if we go to Model under Emulated Hardware, we can find the CDTV, and configuration is then to CDTV. Uh, we're also gonna wanna just eject this alien breed, and I'm gonna go back down to Display, which is already on full screen. And if I go to CD and Hard Drives, this time, I've got Tarakan 2 for the CDTV. 
So you've got one file in here which is a disk image file. So if I go to select image and locate that image of Turrican 2, double left click it and OK. So legend has it, the hardware side of the CDTV was pretty much identical to an Amiga 500. Uh, <laughs> I think Commodore was kind of known for that back in their day, the C64 GS being uh, a C64 pretty much. And here we go, CDTV running through WinUAE. So, um, yeah, I remember this game um, back in the day. It was very popular, and I know it's still a love game by the community. So, that's about it on uh, running uh, Amiga 500, CD32, and CDTV games. If I just F12 out of this one, I'm going to just show you, um, if you're new to the world of realizing there's new games coming out on this old hardware, uh, there's a website I use, which is Indie Retro News. Uh, this website is updated 24 hours a day, so it seems. If I just go to Systems and select Amiga, and of course it covers everything, really, every uh, old system, as you can see on the left. If I just go to Amiga, I'll get a list of brand new releases coming out for the Amiga and previous releases. So uh, this demo just here of this platformer, um, I'm going to try this one out myself. I love colorful platform games. So yeah, you've got a long list of new Amiga games coming out, CD32 games. Uh, the list is endless on this Indie Retro News website. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to show you uh, my beloved Cytronic website which also sells new Amiga releases so mainly on Commodore 64 but uh, Ken's of Cytronic also uh, publishes Amiga games from time to time so we got a few here and these are um, diskette games with artwork cardboard boxes that type of thing there you go uh, so if you do buy a game from Cytronic, the games also comes with a digital copy, so an ADF file or whatever, so you can use it on your WinUAE emulator. So I think that's about it today, but the reason for this tutorial is that uh, forever I read on forums, on uh, different social media platforms that people don't know how to load games. I've seen tutorials myself in the past uh, whilst researching, and there doesn't seem to be anyone which are doing tutorials this simplified is what I've tried to do mine. So, of course, uh, WinUA is a really complex program. You can uh, write images to hard drives, uh, hard drives which are then put inside of real Amigas, uh, i.e. the CF cards. Uh, but that's another tutorial. And, yeah, WinUA, it goes very in-depth. You can even uh, load into it a... a operating system for Amiga such as Workbench but again that's another tutorial at some point in the future it's a great emulator um, and I'll compare it with something like I did earlier today which was the C64 Vice emulator so anyway thanks for watching and I hoped I helped someone out there uh, comment with any questions and I'll get back to you as soon as I can thanks for watching